Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas. You're watching Drakewing Gaming. Oh, one moment. And... Enjoy the video. Hey there everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. As you can see, today I am coming back at you with another Let's Play episode of No More Future, and as always, with every playthrough I've done so far, I've got Sedge with me. Hello, Sedge here, the bonking cat, back yep. again. And their mic is turned up, so you guys should be able to hear them better. Hopefully. Yes, I can hear, I can hear them just fine. So, alright. hope this stays the same. Okay, so we're just going to do... Uh, just uh, let me know when to stop, okay? Yeah, don't worry. All right, and here we go. Your head spins so quickly, it takes you a while to understand what just happened. Your vision needs a moment to readjust to your new surroundings, which seem to have changed in the blink of an eye. You recognize this place. You were here not that long ago, in fact. Oh, new models. They're sprites. <laughs> you definitely don't recognize those two well-dressed foxes, however. Those clothes don't exactly remind you of scientists, and they're carrying what seems to be rather old equipment. Could they be reporters? The other two... The other two, on the other hand, you're very familiar with. In the Drake's case, far more than you'd like. It appears as though Jasper chose to follow Mary along in her interview, which, is, which was hastily set up in her still untidy office. Likely the reason why the angry-looking CEO keeps giving her ice-cold stares every time she turns to face him. Oh, tell us more about this new generation of drones you're developing, Dr. Shelley. Looks like the interview's already started. You try your best to follow in spite of your total ignorance on the topic at hand. What's their state hasn't already been said. They're faster, cheaper, and more compact than ever. Able to carry, able to carry weights up to ten times their size to magnetic levitation and perform precise engineering work on a wide scale. A single drone can replace an entire team of workers, a dozen in an entire construction crew, and they fly. You definitely never heard Mary talking about these drones of hers before, that's for sure. Though, to be fair, you never heard her you never heard of them before on the news either. It's quite hard to believe she had the time to work on such a project, given how busy she is with you and the other synthetics all the time. Is she merely acting as a mouthpiece for someone else at the labs, or is she truly that good at multitasking? However, the implementation of this technology is meeting some fierce resistance from workers all over the globe. People are afraid your drones could take away millions of jobs in key sectors such as constructions and logistics. I mean, who complains that? With a loud cough, the drake implicitly voices his dissent. What I mean is, a fearful reaction is to be expected everywhere innovation presents itself. Change is an easy process, and people are bound to be upset no matter how much their lives improve. After all, our drones are able to do many jobs that might be risky if not deadly for a regular human. Workplace fatalities will practically drop to zero, which I'm sure is something no one can object to. But with all these dangerous jobs in the form of machines, they used to do them will now go home hungry. Well, you know, they say in situations like these. Just learn to code! <laughs> oh my god. Everyone in the room drops in hysterics save for the Drake, who really cannot seem to get behind the joke. All jokes aside, though, I assure you that the loss of these jobs is nothing to panic over. All across history, important innovations have always met as swarms of people crying that their livelihoods be destroyed by the advent of new technology. However, these are nothings with the ramblings of people who cannot see past their small little work desk. Jobs don't disappear, they change, they evolve, and so do the workers and their skill sets. And so, though these drones might do all the hard work instead of regular people, We'll need new workers to build these machines, new technicians to program them, new experts to organize them. Some people might have to adapt to the new environment more than others, but what's life about learning and discovery? I could not agree more, Dr. Shelley. And speaking of workers fearing that jobs might be stolen machines, some people now fear humans are next on the chopping block thanks to your new synthetic technology. The Siamese scoffs at the Phoenix exclamation, shaking her head in mock disbelief. Oh, please. Synthetics are no replacement to humanity, but rather it's natural evolution. The Drake gives the Doctor an angry look, prompting her to backtrack as her eyes ascend into orbit. Potential evolution, at least for those who are ready for it. Synthetics are simply an extension of human life, a way for everyone to cure the greatest illness to affect, to affect mankind since the dawn of the universe, death. 
as Drake's eyes roll to the side upon hearing Mary's claims, though the two reporters don't seem to notice that as they continue their questioning. Waiting for like that, it sounds like nothing more than a pipe dream. <laughs> as if the fire, as if fire, the wheel, the steam engine, electricity were anything more than pipe dreams as well. Or ships, or planes, or space shuttles. At the foundation of every revolution lies a great inventor that dared to dream beyond anything reality could offer. And our synthetics are Pandora's biggest dream yet. Casual bragging aside, you have to admit that it takes a very special kind of person to even attempt what Mary tried to do, much less succeed. You never did ask her where she got the inspiration for this idea in the first place, or much about her past for that matter. Maybe you should rectify that the next time you meet face to face. You're saying that in the future, any will be able to transfer their mind to synthetic body and live forever? For an affordable price, yes. The male fox chuckles lightly at her statement, a wide smile on his face. It's definitely an intriguing perspective. And these synthetics will be carbon copies of their organic originals? Carbon copies wrongfully implies that they're duplicates, but I understand what you mean. To answer your corrected question, yes. Those who undergo the transition, as we call it, will wake up to their new body just the same as they went in, with no changes to their personality or their memory. Simply unbelievable. And this technology could be available to people all over the world tomorrow? Well, let's not get too hasty. We still have plenty of tests to run before we can properly launch our synthetic program worldwide. At least give us until Christmas. After a few more laughs, the Finnick asks a new question. Though some, like my colleague here, are quite ecstatic about the prospect of extending one's life past its natural limit, public perception of your project has been more or less mixed since the very beginning. Many people fear that synthetics are simply gaslighting for a new generation of advanced A-grade AIs. They've also been compared unfavorably to the Kronos disaster 40 years back. The cat nonchalantly scoffs at the reporter's worries, evidently uninterested in taking any of this seriously. I mean, what is in these days, am I right? Even so, after today's incident at a new relay train station, or one of your synthetics and altercation to police, more and more people are expressing doubts about the safety of your androids. Oh boy, I knew they were going to mention that at some point. Though Mary looks ready to dig into the topic, Jasper is quick to forcefully nudge her with his elbow, likely in attempt in reining her in. For the first time since the beginning of the interview, he's the one to answer the reporter's query. The incident has already been reported to the proper authorities, which will take over the investigations to eliminate any possible bias. That is all. <coughs> oh, pardon. Excuse me. Mm. Competent authorities? You cannot recall hearing anything about those. Is he making it up, or did Mary forget to mention those two? I see. But then, how come this Andrew is allowed to go freely during the investigations? We have received countless reports from concerned viewers that a synthetic is currently on a train to Bloomberg completely unsupervised your heart you hear your heart skip a beat as you as you process what you just listened to that girl knows exactly where you are and what you're doing do they have cameras on this very train too did one of the other passengers rat you out feeling too stressed to deal with these questions appropriately you try to focus your thoughts on the annoyed looking siamese who nevertheless appears to be prepared to deal with the lady's concerns the free circulation of the synthetic you're talking about is imperative to a pursuit of knowledge in his condition for that reason, he will not be detained in any matter unless deemed necessary by the competent authorities. Now, I cannot but feel that some people might view this as a sort of live experiment that they did not sign up for. It's not an experiment, it's an opportunity. An opportunity to let go of a fear that's preventing you from accepting change. An opportunity to interact with our synthetics to understand, instead of merely hearing about them on the news. After all, if this technology is ever to become mainstream, we'll have to adapt to a world where humans and synthetics alike coexist in harmony. The sooner people can get into this mindset, the better. Pandora Laboratories remains committed to its mission to create a better future for everyone. All we ask is people to understand why these early steps are necessary, so that we may well one day... Just as suddenly as your vision transitioned to that view of Mary's office, it suddenly transitions back to your immediate surroundings. Wait, why did you... Scared by the sudden change that you hadn't been been at all warned of, you can't help but aim very harsh words at your handler. W what was that, Natalie? Sorry, was the... Sorry, one second. Mm -hmm. Sorry, was the interview still going on? Of course it was. Mary was still talking and everything. 
Truth be told, you were starting to lose sight of how she actually planned to justify you not being locked up somewhere at the HQ. That's very possible that this was her plan all along. I'm really sorry about that. I just want to let you know that we've almost reached Bloomberg. We... almost? Wait, we did? Yeah, it should be visible right now outside the windows. Still a little angry with the ever-apologetic dog, you nevertheless peek through the window and gaze into the starry night outside. It doesn't take you long to recognize the familiar sight of Bloomberg's train station getting closer and closer every second. You truly did lose track of time while you were watching that interview. I had no idea it was taking so long. It's alright. After all, I'm still to blame for undoing the connection so suddenly. Nah, I understand why you had to do it. I would have been a shame. It would have been a shame if I got so wrapped up in the interview that I missed my that I missed my stop. Even though you didn't feel as though you spent much time watching that interview, there's still a lot to unpack. The public continues to be somewhere between hopeful and scared shitless with your actions this morning, not doing much to help your cause. While Mary continues to vouch for your innocence, with mixed results, it's difficult to say where things could head for you next. Although, perhaps you're just reading too much into what could be an entirely inconsequential news report. Speaking of, thanks again for your help, Nats. It's good to know at least one of us is al uh, one of us always has their head on their shoulders. Ah, uh, you thank me, Isaac. Just happy to help, really. Now let's get ready to disembark. Our journey isn't quite over yet. You quietly nod as you stand to your feet, earning a collective gasp from the few bystanders left in your carriage. By the time the train's AI gives its final warning to all the passengers, you're already prepared to leave. With the contents of that interview still playing in the back of your mind, you prepare yourself to cross the familiar borders of a city you know all too well. You disembark the train and step into the, onto the old, slightly dusty floors of Bloomberg's train station. The fresh mountain air feels so much lighter compared to new relays. The difference is definitely noticeable every time you come back to this place. Though, in the end, it's nothing more than a small improvement, seeing as though breathing is now mostly a pastime rather than a necessity for you. After a short while, you hear Natalie gasp in amazement on the other side of the call. Well, this shit's different. Different? How? In a good way, I think. After a brief delay, Natalie speaks once more. Um, I'm sorry for asking this, but would you mind looking around a little? It's hard to get an idea of a place I'm just doing the same spot over and over. Uh, sure, give me one second. You do as the Labrador asks and start slowly moving your head around, giving your friend at the labs a panoramic view of your surroundings. You can't remember the last time you actually took some time to look around this place. It truly feels like it was ages ago. The centuries-old halls of this large, gloomy place have adamantly, re have adamantly resisted the passage of time and the fury of the elements. You can't be too sure, but you assume that their appearance is more or less the same as it was when this structure was first built. No ad boards showcasing the latest viral products, no flashy projectors hanging from the ceiling. Even the voice over the intercom is just a pre-recorded message left by some stranger long gone. Instead, you get a large, old-style digital board on a simple LED screen attached to a huge marble construct to showcase all the incoming and outgoing trains, as well as an ancient analog clock to display the time. The latter is probably the only thing around here that catches your attention. It's a veritable museum piece, the likes of which, have, the likes of which many have never seen before in their lives. It's a relic as old as this station in the city keeps it here more out of pride than practicality. Especially considering it's been broken since long ago before you were born. You've never seen his hands move an inch, yet many claim that the clock somehow manages to always be wrong no, no matter what time of the day it is. A rumor you definitely don't have the patience to test, even in your current state. In some respects, Bloomberg Station is a little bit better than new relays, in spite of how much more technologically advanced this ladder is. With practically no audiovisual pollution, it's definitely a much calmer, even soothing place at times. On the other hand, compared to new relay, it also feels a lot more stagnant, anachronistic, lifeless. Which is ironic, given how many people are still around at this time of the day, staring directly at you like they just saw a ghost. <sighs> Not this again. Oh, right. People. Surprise, worry, fear, anger. The emotions you've come to expect, really. Surprisingly, not everyone's wary of approaching you this time. A brave few step forward to greet you with microphones or smartphones in their hands. And there's the man of the hour. Mr. Isaac, what are your thoughts on Dr. Shelley and the rest of the Pandora Labs team? Mr. Isaac, do you have any comments on the future of a synthetic race? 
Isaac, do you believe the current price of crackers is in any way unfair? Perhaps a little too forward, indeed. This is quickly getting ridiculous. As you wonder how best to approach this situation, you hear a familiar voice shouting in your ear. This guy's not leaving anytime soon. Come on, Isaac. Let's get out of here. Are you sure? You don't... you want to... Yeah, come on. You know where the exit is, right? You lay there stunned for a moment as you process, as you process the lady's request, but ultimately not an approval. Without further discussion, you heed the Labrador's advice and begin heading out of the station as swiftly and quietly as the breeze in the night. The boisterous crowd disperses as soon as they see you approaching, with only a few recording your passage as you go by. The vast majority ceases to pursue you once you turn a corner, and soon, and soon the noise levels around the station return to normal. On your way out, you speak to Natalie once again. Hey, um, sorry about that, by the way. Hmm? For what? You know... We're leaving so soon. I know you wanted to look around a bit more, but... Hey, you don't have to apologize. I'm the one who told you to leave. And besides, I'm still on the clock, remember? I'm supposed to be helping you out, not the other way around. We can sightsee and stuff in every time if you want. For now, we should probably just be thinking of making it home safely. Got it? Got it. Thanks. As you walk past the gates that mark the threshold of the train station, you take a moment to consider all the help that Natalie has already provided you with. You feel like you're lucky to have someone like her at your side right now. After what happened this morning, you feel a lot more comfortable moving around with someone reliably always looking out for you. Through Natalie's helpful advice, you might even be able to make it home safely after all. As you leave the train station, you're immediately greeted by the loud, boisterous facade of the very city you grew up in. You could have gotten used to New Relay's almost total absence of loud vehicles roaming the streets and annoying commuters moving to and from without, any, without rhyme or reason. You could also do without all these crowds of shady onlookers staring at and recording you no matter where you go. I feel weight of all those tears you can hear. Are you sure you're doing okay? Yeah, I can handle it. It's early evening, so it's normal for so many people to be hanging around this area. Still, after what happened this morning. Do you fear someone tried recording you again? Either for fame or just in case, yeah. Even if I don't end up doing anything, I'm still a weirdo to these people, so they're bound to show up wherever I go. But, you know, if I can't handle it now, when am I ever going to? Right. That's a spirit. Just gotta hang on tight and reach your place. No one will try following you there. Yeah, I, uh, hope so. As you glance once again to a large swarm of would-be paparazzi pointing their smartphones at you from a mile away, you wonder just how easy it'll be to actually lose them. Either way, let's try to just stay calm and avoid giving them anything they could use against me. Agreed. Let's both do our best being, uh, normal, I guess. You briefly chuckle at the canine's remark as you continue walking down the road, large crowd in tow. The thought of simply turning around and walking towards them briefly crosses your mind. It'd certainly be effective at scattering them, if they are anything like the rest of the people you've encountered so far. But, in the end, you decide against it. All you want is to be left in peace, and going out of your way to scare off a couple morons doesn't feel particularly peaceful to you. With some luck, they'll disperse on their own once you reach your apartment complex. With even greater luck, maybe, well, before that. For now, all you can do is pay no mind to those onlookers as you continue your trek down the busy road. Lania Street is one of the longest in is one of the longest in the whole city. It runs from one end of the settlement to the other, splitting it splitting it into two very unequal halves. There's the rich side, which you're currently leaning into. Cozy single-family houses, large shopping centers, and supermarkets filled with every goody imaginable. A few parks. You grew up there, in one of those homes, in relative peace. A time you now cannot look back to without feeling sadness, anger, and regret. Then there's the other side, literally on the other side of the road. Large apartment complexes, smaller utility stores that barely keep up with the times, mucky streets that end up nowhere. The sort of place your parents never wanted you to find your way into when you were little, basically. Though now, through some weird twist of fate, that's precisely where you reside. Sooner or later, you'll have to cross the road and venture into that chaotic, dim-lit realm. For now, however, you'd rather stay right over here and bask in the bright lights that the hundreds of restaurants and high-end shops behind you are blasting onto the sidewalk. It's not exactly relaxing or pleasurable, but it beats taking a deep dive into that unquenchable darkness looming on the horizon. Hmm. What's this? Something suddenly distracts you from your musings. 
A sweet, delightful aroma that caught your attention on a whim as it brushed against your nostrils and now completely overwhelms your every other thought. By all means, you shouldn't have noticed it in the vast sea of scents and smells that come from the many eateries all around. And yet... What's the matter, Isaac? Oh, gnats! Uh, don't worry, I'm just looking around for... Ah, there it is! You beeline for the source of that divine scent so quickly, you don't even give the Labrador time to inquire what you're up to. It's a simple stand standing in the middle of the local Leroy, Lu Leroy Luffin's fast food parking lot. The old, half unreliable sort that only sees the light of day on extremely busy days. A cotton candy stand! It feels like ages since you last saw one. You approach the large bucket-like contraption on top of the stand with a gleeful look in your eyes and a pep in your step, willfully oblivious to the gazes of the people nearby. The young uniform-wearing anteater on the opposite side of the hastily built shop rests his tired, unflinching gaze upon you while you position yourself before him. With an eager, almost childlike tone, you make your simple request to the unimpressed-looking worker. May I have some cotton candy, please? The young worker turns on the autopilot as he begins to fulfill your order, never once turning his gaze on you as he collects the sponge sugar around the bucket with his long, wooden stick. He expected his eyes to flicker between you and the stick as he went about doing his job, worried about any sudden movements just like anyone else. Instead, the man almost treats you as if you weren't there. It's an uncommon response for sure, but not one you're entirely unaccustomed to. Though, still a little uncomfortable, it definitely beats all the alternatives. Besides, while he's not the first person you meet to give you the cold shoulder so readily, you sense that this time the circumstances might be a tad different. They really don't pay you enough to deal with this, huh? Then it slowly turns his head sideways to face you, while his hands continue their work unconcerned. His voice is stone cold, but somehow still manages to sound incredulous nevertheless. They pay me? The delivery of that line is enough to steal a few laughs from you, while the young man remains as unfazed as he always was. Right. Tough night, huh? I get it. Sorry for bothering you, I just couldn't resist. Been forever since I last ate one of these. Though he doesn't look or at does he doesn't look or sound like it, the young worker seems interested enough in you to continue this short conversation. You're cool. Let me guess. Last time was before you ended up looking like that. I yeah, it was. The young worker pulls the wooden stick out of the bucket, now covered on all sides by soft, fluffy, delicious looking sugar, and hands it out to you nonchalantly. Cheer up! Have some cotton candy. The offer comes in just in time, right as you're about to have another bad trip down memory lane. You eagerly snatch the stick out of the anteater's hand, hold, hold it out before you as you inspect it all over, then sink your robotic teeth into it with unfettered enthusiasm. It tastes just as nicely as you remember, like biting into a rainbow-flavored cloud. Fleeting memories of sweeter days, when both your parents still walk by your side, resurface in your mind as you wrap your tongue around the delicate candied strings. There's no aftertaste as you send the first bite down into your gullet, one way or the other. The flavor flees, flees from your mind just as quickly as it arrived, and the same is true for the rest of your th other thoughts. Just then, another sudden thought crosses your mind. No! Oh, right! You turn to face the anteater, who's already holding a mobile cash-out device in his hand. A simple tool with a narrow slit for people to slide their credit cards through, the mo through, a, through in a monocolor screen. Just another relic of a different time, clearly. An app payment or credit card? Right. The payment. You obviously don't have a credit card with you at the moment, and you'll die before you create an account on Leroy's Luffin's app. However, perhaps there's a better way to go about it. Hey, Nats, is there a way I can pay through... The smart Labrador intercepts your thought before you can even finish it. Yeah, of course. Give me a sec. After politely asking the young Annie your first permission, you grab the device with your free hand as you take another bite into the delicious treat. The screen flickers for a moment before showing you an amount more than sufficient to cover the transaction. Seeing those numbers pop up on the screen, even the anteater's eyes widen a little. After checking the device to ensure that you didn't play a prank on him, he calmly puts it down and gives you a concerned look. Whoa, that's like... three times what you owed us. Right, of course, that's what he's worried about. The rest, you can consider it your tip. Trust me, you've earned it. The tired worker turns to face you once again, this time looking as incredulous as his voice is. You... you sure about this? Yeah, of course. You treated me nicely, and that's more than I can say for most people I've met today. Make as if to leave, but stop yourself after a few brief steps. You turn tail and take a moment to chat with the young worker some more. Oh, and by the way, if your manager tries to steal even a single penny off that tip, you can tell him this. I'll be back. The two of you start laughing like madmen as the crowd from before loudly snaps photos at you from afar. It takes a solid minute for the cackling to die down, and then it's the anteater's turn to speak. Please do. You can blow this place up whenever you want, dude. 
Well, if that Android uprising everyone's talking about does come to pass, this fast food, this fast food will be the first on the hit list. Rest assured. You finally turn around and wave to you wave your new buddy goodbye. See you around, and thanks for the cotton candy. The young man waves you off as you as you cross the road at just the right moment to leave both him and the crowd of annoying paparazzi stuck behind a torrent of fast-moving cars. Those people won't be able to catch up with you for quite a while, you reckon. A perfect time to sit back and steal and steady your breath as you approach the bad end of town. It doesn't take long for you to lose yourself in the myriad of narrow streets and tall buildings that characterize the side of the city. The scenery around you is as dark and gloomy as you remember. Everything from the houses to the street itself is either old, grimy, disorderly, or barely passable at best. Out of all the things your parents did in your childhood, forbidding you from entering this seemingly long-forgotten maze on your lonesome was probably the most sound. Your body quivers with every step you take as you nervously look around you like a young kid in an abandoned mall. The streets are unusually quiet for this time of the day. You hadn't even seen the, like, the shadow of a person for five minutes at least. It looks like everybody vanished at once without a trace. Normally, you'd be ecstatic at the notion. However, given the poor and settling nature of your surroundings, this only serves to agitate you even more so. Fortunately, Natalie doesn't seem anywhere near as bothered by the situation as you are. Hey, are you okay? You don't look all that great. Yeah, of course I am. Why do you, a why do you ask? Are you sure? Just a few seconds of pure silence, then the truth comes spilling out like water from a breached dam. Yeah, no, synthetic or not, this place gives me the creeps. Wait, for real? But it's so cool. It's like a place straight out of a horror movie. That doesn't make you feel any less afraid. No. Well, as you may have already figured out by now, I never was a fan of the genre. The canine appears quite saddened by your response. Aw, that's a shame. But, like, is that because you don't watch many horror movies, or do you just... Just, just, just get me out of here as fast as you can, alright? Of course. The GDS is only 10 minutes to the condos, so j just keep your nerves steady and we should be fine. Right. I hope so. Perhaps it's merely your relentless paranoia talking, but you don't exactly have a good feeling about this. You're thankful to Natalie for somehow managing to remain steadfast in such a bizarre situation. At least one of you needs to pay attention as you walk through these shady environments. You could use her being a little less excited about this, but overall you're glad that she's sticking by your side as you continue your journey into the unknown. Speaking of, how come you need the GPS for this? Have you lived here for a few days already? I have, but it's not like I left my house a whole lot. What? Uh, sorry, it's not like I left my house a whole lot either. Didn't really need to go anywhere to begin with. Plus, what with the whole public hysteria regarding me even existing, I figured it would have been better to just stay inside and hide. I getcha. I assume you also never... The two of you are startled by a sudden, unexpected shriek coming from somewhere nearby. What was that? You wager the sound came from a nearby door that wasn't closed properly and remained slightly ajar, fluttering back and forth. It must have been that thing getting moved around by the wind. Are you sure? Maybe we could... We are not checking that out! With a defeated awe, Natalie quiets down once more. You're not sure whether she's doing this on purpose, but at least her amusing enthusiasm helps you de-stress a little bit once all's said and done. Regardless, no matter how vehemently she argues in favor of objectively terrible decisions, you're not going to go out of your way to actively partake in a scary slasher movie. Ugh, this place is driving me crazy. Oh, come on, are you really that scared? Took you long enough to realize... The Labrador can't help but laugh at you as you squint and pout, much the same as she did when you first met her at the labs. Hey, don't laugh. You never lived. You never lived here. You don't know what stuff happens around these parts at night. Huh? What do you mean? Are there any serial killers talking on or something? Gang wars? Eldritch horrors? I, I'm not sure, honestly. I didn't come around these parts often as a kid, especially when the moon came, when the moon was out. But when I did, sometimes I'd hear screams echoing just a few blocks away. She shadows lurking beyond every corner, like monsters waiting to strike. Luckily, I was always with my parents when that happened, but now? The Labrador suddenly butts in the, mid butts in the midst of your wild ramblings. Wow, that's so exciting. It's like a scary movie set right next door. Do you think there's a popcorn vendor somewhere nearby? Nats! Okay, sheesh. Point taken. No more jokes. But for real, are you sure this will happen? For real? I don't mean to be rude, but... 
this all sounds like it came out of a nightmare you had as a kid or something. Or maybe it's sort of a natural reaction in your systems. Hey, I'm not making it up. I'm not saying you are. I'm just hypothesizing that, you know, you may or may not have been exaggerating some minor noises you heard during your... In an instant, the endless quiet around you is suddenly shattered. A much louder shriek, brief but quite distinct, interrupts Natalie in the middle of her remark, putting both of you on edge. It takes a while for either of you to speak up as the strange sound dies down just as suddenly, but that gives you plenty of time to build up your rightly deserved annoyance. You really had to doubt me, huh? I I'm sorry. It's not my fault, I swear. But, but seriously, what even was that? I'm not sure. It seemed like a scream, but more surprised than scared. Kind of like when you trip over something while tiptoeing around your office in the midst of a blackout. That's oddly specific and funny to boot. Sadly, this is no time to stop and laugh about it. Uh, do you know how much longer we have in this particular playthrough? Uh, uh, just a couple more lines and we can stop. Sweet, okay. Either way, that couldn't have been good. We should probably get out, get out of here before something bad happens. You have to have me twice. As if suddenly aware of the risks inherent to your surroundings, the Labrador begins to insist for your quick departure from the area. Not that you're complaining. You make as if to run away as fast as you can, but that's when you hear some strange noises coming from a nearby alleyway. Your reaction is the same as the scream you heard earlier, you can't help but think that the two things are related. Keep it together, Isaac. Don't get any weird ideas. You try to reassure yourself over and over that all you should do is get out. You know nothing good would come out of your involvement in whatever's going on over here, over there. You don't have to check out those noises. You don't have to find out what's going on. You don't have to figure out if someone needs... Ah, fuck it! Hey, where are you going? That's the wrong way! I know, but bear with me, okay? I might need your help. Wait, you... Alright, fine. But don't do anything rash, okay? You silently nod as you head in the direction of the commotion, which only grows louder with each passing moment. And we can stop here. Okay. No, let's... There we go. <laughs> there we go. No spoilers. Yes. Oh, man. That's actually a good place to stop it off at, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. I can't wait. Is Isaac going to kick some ass? Maybe. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, thank you so much for doing this with me. This is always fun. Mm-hmm. All right, next but guys, chapter is gonna be a doozy. Well, not chapter, like next episode. Damn, I can't wait. But anyway, guys, right. thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye.